everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. My name's Sarah Rose Leonard. I'm a live events producer here with KQED. Um, and for those of you joining us for the first time, KQED is Northern California's PBS and NPR member station. So KQED Live, this program, is a new multi-platform events program that produces screenings, talks, food events, and performances, all based on KQED's mission to inform, inspire, and involve. Um, you are involved by eating cake tonight. <laughs> um, so you can learn more at kqed.org backslash live. If we bring value to your everyday life, I encourage you to donate and become a member. You can find out how to become a member at kqed.org slash donate. We want to thank our season sponsors, without whom none of this would be possible. So that's SF MoMA, Comcast Business, Berkeley Rep, and San Francisco Symphony. Extra thank you to the San Francisco amateur astronomers who helped get the word out about this event. Are you all here? Do we have two of you here, maybe? Yes, wonderful. Hi. Yeah, you can stand. Um, SFAA is a nonprofit organization of astronomy enthusiasts exploring the night sky and engaging the public since 1952. They feature regular city star parties for the public and regular astronomy lectures at the Randall Museum. You can check them out at sfaaastronomy.org. All right. Tonight's host is Cecilia Phillips. She is the Czech Please Bay Area coordinating producer and on-camera reporter. Cecilia has long been a part of the Bay Area food scene. She's worked under several celebrity chefs and served as a food tour guide many years in San Francisco. Um, in her special series, Cecilia Tries It, she scours the Bay Area in search of off-the-beaten-path spots for exciting, culinary, diverse experiences that fans cannot miss. So let's welcome Cecilia to the stage. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everyone. Hi. How are you all doing tonight? Oh, no. I don't think you'll be able to hear that from space. Let's try that again. How are you all doing tonight? Much better. Um, I wanted to welcome you all in to our very amazing event tonight, Science is a Piece of Cake. Um, this time, we're doing something very different. How many of you were here for our first event? Okay, welcome back, welcome back. Um, I'm glad that it was good enough for you to return, so we appreciate that. Um, of the people who were here the last time, did any of you enter? Were you entered? Raise your hand if you entered in. Okay, all right, welcome back, bakers. Um, our first event, we did um, geology, which was really exciting, and we had you recreate different places throughout the Bay Area. Um, but tonight, we're focusing in on astronomy, and we're gonna get very specific with it, so it's really exciting. Um, Tonight we're gonna to be melding cake and science and we're gonna learn how the elements go into the cakes that we're gonna see on stage. And also we're gonna learn so much more about astronomy outside of our Earth's atmosphere, how the stars co collide and combine to create these elements that make us who we are today. So um, without further ado, I'd love to have me join on stage my co-host for tonight, Aditi Bandlamudi. Hello, Aditi. Hey, Cecilia. <laughs> so, Aditi, in your daytime, you are KQED's housing reporter. I am. But in your free time and spare time, you are a cake aficionado. <laughs> I'm a cake eater and a cake maker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it's great to have you on the stage because a lot of this is actually your inspiration and your idea for what we could do to explain space through cake. So, can you tell everybody a little bit about how you came up with the idea behind this? Yeah, so after we did the first event, I was sort of like, okay, geology and cake. Now, astronomy and cake, how do we do that? Um, and I decided to go to Cal Academy's uh, planetarium, as one does. How many have um, been? How many have been? Oh, amazing. That's a lot. Okay. Very good. Those of you who didn't raise your hand, please go. It's amazing. Um, and in the planetarium, you can actually see this movie called Spark the Universe in Us. Um, and it's, it's really, really cool. And it basically is about. I guess the life cycle of a star. Yeah. Um, and more importantly, it's about the, the elements that are created from all these different interactions. So we tried to translate all of that into cake. <laughs> Exactly. And it was no easy feat, but we didn't have to bake this time, right? We did not have to bake. Thank God. No. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so today we're going to learn about the birth, the life, the death, and the rebirth of these stars through the elements. And along with that, we had to have another baker join you. So you've invited another person to come on stage? I really did. Yes. <laughs> it is Jamie Lee. Um, and Jamie, you'll join us out here. Now, 
Jamie requires a huge round of applause. She runs uh, Jamie Cakes SF. Um, she was featured in HBO's uh, uh, sorry, Baketopia, right? Um, amazing show. And she also was one of our judges for the previous geology cake off. Yes. Uh, Jamie, how are you feeling tonight? I, I just came back for the cake, really. So <laughs> I'm really excited about that. I'm excited to eat some of these out of, out of this world cakes. Ayo. I even wore my sparkly shoes. So I'm Woo. ready to go. I'm, I'm, ready. I'm wearing I, a spacesuit. Yeah, exactly. This is what I call amazing. a spacesuit. You are a like, star, gosh, truly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I was excited about for tonight is that you two did a lot of um, brainstorming as far as like what kinds of cakes we would also have on stage. Can you tell us a little bit, Jamie, about the types of shapes you were looking for? What was part of the brainstorming process? Process. Yeah, so we were looking for things that were spherical, some half spherical. We were looking at buttercream, how smooth they can get with like mm -hmm. some stars are actually quite smooth, like the dwarf stars. Um, we're also looking for creativity yeah. in cakes, a lot of color, how they layered, how they added the elements that these stars produce mm -hmm. into the cake as well. Yeah. So we're looking at everything from the outside in. So awesome. we're really excited about yeah. this. Okay, great. So that's the cake portion, but without uh, scientists, it's really not a piece of cake. And <laughs> it's not going to be science without them. So let's bring to the stage Bruce McIntosh and Jackie Benitez. <laughs> All right. So Jackie is the assistant manager and the, of the planetary programs at Cal Academy. And Bruce McIntosh, you're the director and University of California Observatories. You're also a professor of astrophysics and of astronomy. Um, Jackie, can you tell us a little bit more about Cal Academy and then Spark, uh, the program that you all feature there? Sure. So um, I am very excited uh, to be working at the Morrison Planetarium. I've been there for about 11 and a half years. Can't believe how long it's been. Um, but so in the planetarium, it's a wonderful place that we get to see different phenomena, different ideas um, that we normally can't see in our daily lives. A lot of the things that we're going to be seeing today happen in a split second or over centuries. And it's only with the power of the planetarium that we can see that all in 30 minutes. So I'm really excited you all get a chance to see a little clips from the show itself. Awesome. And Bruce, can you tell us a little bit about um, the work that you do and why it's so exciting to be able to have a cake competition to show off that sort of science portion of your studies? So I run University of California Observatories, which runs telescopes for the students and the faculty and the astronomers um, throughout the University of California system. We run Lick Observatory near San Jose, which you are all welcome to come up and visit. Um, we have summer shows um, that are pretty amazing. We run the two Keck telescopes in Hawaii, the ones you see here, that have made discoveries that have won Nobel Prizes, found black holes, planets orbiting around other stars. Nothing too special. Um, <laughs> and it's pretty awesome to come here and talk about this. Um, one of the things we understand about the universe, we know how it began. There was a Big Bang. Big Bang made hydrogen and helium the second and third most boring things you can have in the entire universe. You cannot make a cake out of hydrogen and helium no matter how hard you try. <laughs> you also can't make planets and you can't make people. Everything else in the universe, every atom in our bodies other than the hydrogen ones, was made inside of stars. And often stars doing really interesting, weird things like exploding, which is kind of what we'll be talking about as we go through all of this here. So the, the basic theme is non-boring atoms and explosions <laughs> and how that leads to, to the universe that we get to be part of. Yeah. Hopefully all explosions, just all about space, but not within the cakes, right? Nothing like that No tonight. exploding cakes. Hopefully. No exploding. Hopefully, <laughs> unless maybe there were some surprises. Maybe there's some surprises. <laughs> we don't know, I don't know. yet. <laughs> so um, to start, each of you was able to come through the lobby and take a look at all the amazing cakes that the bakers brought, yeah? Um, let's give them a round of applause, first of all. Now, not all of those amazing cakes could make it to the stage, but each of you was given a chance to be able to vote on a People's Choice Award. And our judges went through, took a look at all the cakes, and they decided which ones would be able to um, make it to the stage here. And then from the rest, you all were able to decide on the People's Choice winner. So I actually have the results here of amazing. that. Amazing. Um, each category was a selected a winner. So for beginner, intermediate, and advanced, we have three different winners. And if you wouldn't mind coming to the stage as soon as I call your name, and and um, we're going to have you stand right behind your cake. And if you could come up from this side. For the beginner category, cake number one was Michaela O'Brien. The intermediate category was number two, Kaya Hayes. And advanced was number seven, Joanne Deesis. Right up here. Right over to the side. Yep. Right up the stage. There you go. Q 
keep it going for them so that they can make it up here. <laughs> All right, so just go ahead and stand in front of your cake, each one of you. Awesome. Welcome in. Okay, so what's your name? And tell me just a little bit about your cake. You look familiar. <laughs> I was here last time. <laughs> you were, okay, so you made it back. Okay, congratulations. So tell me a little bit about your cake. Uh, yeah, it's, um, I was very inspired by the bright colors. Um, there's a lot of the different flavors like banana and chocolate with magnesium, almonds, all those good, good things. Awesome, okay, and for you, what's your cake? So you were from the advanced round. We're gonna work backward here. So for you, you're intermediate? Yes, um, I made a chocolate cake with raspberry coulis filling and vanilla buttercream and I airbrushed it to be the blue gradient. Amazing. Great job. <laughs> All right. And I'm going to scoot past you here. And for you, you're the beginner round. Yes. Um, I made a almond flour orange cardamom cake with mascarpone whipped frosting. Awesome. Okay. So as you all may know, you are going to get a chance to try all of these cakes out in the lobby. Um, we're going to make sure that everyone has signed and that they're able to eat everything. And we actually will have these cakes labeled outside with the winners. So give them a big round of applause. Um, if you wouldn't mind going off the same part of the stage, thank you very much. Come up here, everybody. So Aditi, you have a prize for each of the people who won one of the People's Choice Awards? I do, I do. Um, all of the uh, People's Choice Award winners will get uh, a KQED tote bag, um, some uh, packet of sprinkles from Baking Arts, a really nice baking studio in San Mateo, um, a mini spatula, which every baker needs, and a dish towel, which comes in handy. All right, awesome. Okay, so we're gonna go through each of the rounds here. We're gonna start obviously with the beginner round and throughout we're gonna be taking a look at the different things that the judges are going to be judging the cakes on. Um, to start with the beginner round, we have a very interesting thing that occurs in space, which is a white dwarf star. Um, but before we do that, we may as well go ahead and have the big reveal of the cakes. Normally I would say drum roll, but I think for this more appropriately would be like blast off or something. Should we do that? Okay, so. Blast off. <laughs> okay, so these are very fun. Okay, so this is the beginner round. So um, we'll get into the rules for um, the competition here, but before we do that, I would love to chat with you, Bruce, and just learn a little bit more about white dwarf stars. We do have an image, a still image, that we can kind of show to everybody. Um, and can you explain uh, a little bit more about white dwarf stars? So White dwarf star is what our sun is going to end up as. It's what a kind of medium small star finishes its life as. Right now the sun is burning, it's turning hydrogen into helium, not very cake friendly. At the end of its life it's going to turn helium into slightly more complicated elements, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. You can technically make a cake out of hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. It's basically just a giant lump of sugar. Not as interesting as any of these, but we're reaching the point where you can start to have more complicated things. Once it's done that, it can't burn any more fuel, and it contracts. We can go to the next picture. It shrinks down into something basically the size of the Earth. You have something that weighs the mass of an entire sun compressed into a space the size of the Earth. It's so dense that a teaspoonful of it weighs about as much as an elephant, a couple of tons worth. And then, mostly, if it's a star by itself, it just sort of sits there and cools off. But, in some cases, white dwarfs are part of pairs of stars. And that's where actually we get to see a clip from the planetarium show, Spark the Universe at S. So we're going to start off looking at that pair of white dwarfs, and they are orbiting each other because they are so massive. Eventually, one of them will lose that push and pull and tug of each other and will start to kind of gobble up all of the stuff uh, on, from that other white dwarf. And as they continue to go around and around, they are eventually going to collide. Always a few seconds later than you want them. Yeah, to always. In these contexts. <laughs> there we go. And as you can see, it definitely is about the size of planet Earth, and it'll start to accumulate all that matter onto itself, and then eventually it will collide, hopefully about right now. Uh, <laughs> no, of course not. Um, <laughs> But one really cool thing 
I love about this clip is that it, you can see that this supernova, when it actually does explode, it's not completely spherical. You can actually see kind of that crest or uh, uh, kind of area where the old super or that other white dwarf was. So you can kind of tell when you're looking at supernovas if there is kind of that divot shape in the supernova. Most likely it was because it has a companion. Exactly. And that collision turns a lot of the mass of the star into heavier stuff, especially iron. It builds its way up element after element until, and in the process, conveniently blows up and throws all those elements out where the next set of stars can turn them into planets or people. Okay. Um, so as you all are tasting through the cakes and you're starting to judge these three here, um, Jamie and Aditi, I know that you two are going to be mostly focused in on the taste and um, the creativity portion of this. So let's talk a little bit about the creativity and originality portion. So you have some really specific things that you're looking for in these cakes, Aditi? Yes. So as Bruce mentioned, Bruce and Jackie mentioned, um, you know, white dwarf stars have this sort of like blue iridescent quality to them and we're really looking for cakes that um, show that quality and um, we've also got this like fun flavor component um, you know because spark uh, is is about really the elements that are created when uh, you know these stars interact with each other we wanted to base these flavors or we wanted to have the bakers um, you know get their flavors inspired by the elements that are created when white dwarfs explode Jamie, take so, it away. <laughs> so some of these elements that we can find in normal everyday baking um, is going to be dairy. So we're, of course, a lot of the cakes do have dairy. We're looking at dairy. We're looking at uh, maybe even breakfast cereals for the iron, um, calcium, zinc. So we're looking at sesame seeds, creative uses of sesame seeds, nuts, poppy seeds, pumpkin seeds inside the cakes as well. And then, of course, from a baking perspective, we're looking at something with a really nice crumb. How is it frosted? Is it accurate? Does it look smooth? and creative uses really of any kind of decorating elements. Did you use sugar? Did you airbrush? Um, yeah, so we're looking at beautiful, clean type of cakes that really incorporates all of those flavors. Mm -hmm. And elements. maybe unlike another cake contest where a dense cake might not win, here <laughs> dense stars are dense. So, you know, dense cake might not yeah. be that bad. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Great to know. All right, so I think that the judges need to take a moment to deliberate now. So they're going to do that. In the meantime, I would love to have the three folks who baked these cakes come to the stage. And if you wouldn't mind just coming right up to the side here. Thank you so much. And then just please enter through this side to the stage. Hello, and then go ahead and stand right in front of your cake. <laughs> okay, welcome to the stage, bakers. So, um, get nice and close to the table here so we can have all of you nice and tight. Okay, amazing. So, I will have you introduce yourselves and then tell me what elements went into your cake. And if you could just describe how you made it and what ingredients you used and what your inspiration was. So, I'll start with you over here, um, your cake number three. So, tell us about the cake. And then it's the two of you. Okay, so I like that. The two white dwarves here, yeah? Okay. <laughs> Hopefully one of you will not explode and then, okay, anyway, keep going. Uh, so what, what went into your cake? Um, so we tried to use as many of the elements as possible. So we included calcium, magnesium, iron, um, and zinc. Um, and I'll let Mombi go ahead and describe the exact ingredients. Um, yeah, so we, well, some of it is not actually, it's a bit cheeky. We did add some Earl Grey tea, just because, you know, white dwarf stars, it's when the um, nuclear energy is being exhausted, and we we're like, you could use some caffeine, <laughs> you know? Yeah, um, I love that. We also did sesame in the buttercream, as well as in these little brittle that's also in the cake um, to represent the elements. Um, these little orbs are made of marzipan, which also contains, um, you know, some of the elements, but... Um, they represent the planets that might have been orbiting that star before it died. And if they're farther off from the star, they can continue orbiting it potentially. But if uh, they are closer, they might explode into shards. Hence the sesame shards, yeah. Oh, I love it. Very, very, very good. Very good. Okay, so we have cake number four. What's your name? And then tell me all about your cake and how you made it. Okay, I'm Kiki. 
Um, I made a cinnamon toast crunch cake because breakfast cereals are high in iron. Maybe not cinnamon toast crunch, but <laughs> most breakfast cereals are. And then I asked um, in the cake balls, I made them really dense because she was saying like white dwarf stars are really dense. Um, and so they also have some beet powder in them. That's why they have a little red tint to them because beet is high in zinc. And then I used cereal milk. So I took the cereal and I put it in the milk for a while and then I strained it and used that as the dairy product for calcium. Okay. And then it looks like you have some little some little tags here? Oh, yes. And, well, <laughs> Google told me that there are <laughs> eight white dwarf stars in the nearest hundred solar systems around our sun. So I put their names on the stars. Amazing. And don't worry, I, no one expected you to be a scientist. So <laughs> it's okay that you use Google, but great job of using the internet. We love it. Okay. Okay, so what's your name? And tell me all about your cake. Uh, my name's Judy, and um, this is an almond sour cream cake uh, with uh, buttercream frosting. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do now that we have this here. Oh, I am actually going to turn your cake around so we can see the insides. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind. We love this part here. We've, we've tested this out before. The audience loves the inside. All right, there we go. Okay, so there's the inside of your cakes. And then, so tell me how you got the frosting to look that way. Uh, actually, I tried to make um, a mirror glaze and it didn't work. So I <laughs> scraped it all off and then kind of splattered it so that it looked like that. That's great, ingenuity. I mean, that's kind of like space, you know, just splattering everywhere. Um, this is great, okay, amazing. And it looks as though maybe our judges might have an, a, 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 a winner, perhaps. Okay, so, we do. Okay, yes. so let's, let's hear about it. So what did we love about the cakes? So, you know, the, the, the first cake on the side, um, uh, cake 14, um, we felt that the decoration was so smooth and pretty. Um, it's, just, it's just gorgeous. It's just such a gorgeous cake. Um, the fourth one, we loved, or sorry, the, the middle one, uh, cake number four, um, we loved the accuracy of it. Um, and in fact, the um, little like balls on top were pretty dense, which is accurate. Um, <laughs> And, and finally, cake three, or this cake right here, um, tasted phenomenal. I mean, just such a great flavor. Um, but ultimately, we decided that cake number four was our winner. <laughs> Amazing job. Amazing job. Very stiff competition. <laughs> So come right over, over here. Oh my gosh, I entered the cake competition last year in the intermediate category. That was way too hard for me. So I came back with a vengeance. You did. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is amazing. So um, we are going to have a prize for you as well at the end. So, and we'll tell you more about that later. But go ahead and grab your cake. Let's give them a hand for the beginner round. All right, so we have to move to our next round here. And we are going to be heading into the intermediate round. And for this one, this one is really fun and unique. And we are starting out with neutron stars. Now, this one was really specific in um, the way that we had wanted folks to create the shape of the cake. So Aditi and um, Jamie, can you talk more about like the shapes, what we're looking for like physically? Okay. Um, once again, I guess we should blast off. Let's I think take we should blast, blast off. off. Let's take these right. off so we can see. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> so design-wise, what we're really looking for in these cakes um, is something that is dome-shaped. So we're looking at domes, half spheres. Um, other things that we're looking at is something that is nice and smooth, incorporation of some of the elements like gold. So that was really important here. Um, so seeing gold, edible gold, and also um, you know, Bruce was talking about how these neutron stars are quite dense. We definitely 
what is it, like a teaspoon of something could equal something else. And we certainly wouldn't want that, it's like a teaspoon of sea kelp in one bite. But those are the elements that we're looking for in here is the sea kelp, uh, the gold leaf, uh, any kind of silver sprinkles, silver leaf in the cakes as well. So, Okay, so um, as the judges are tasting through Bruce, let's chat through the image of the prompt. So this is what we gave the bakers um, to take a look at. And so these um, neutron stars, uh, they also come in pairs? Almost every kind of star turns out to come in pairs. Our sun is kind of weird that it doesn't have another um, companion, just as us, um, small by comparison. <laughs> um, neutron stars are the end, like white dwarfs are the end for a star like the sun, neutron stars are the end for much bigger stars. Um, we'll talk about that actually more with supernovas, and there's a bunch of spoilers, so we won't go into it yet. But at the end of it, you end up with this incredibly dense lump of stuff that isn't even atoms anymore. It's all compressed neutrons. And again, it's the weight of an entire star, but if you go to the next picture, it's compressed down into something roughly the size of San Francisco or Manhattan. It's so dense, like my colleague was saying, that a teaspoonful of it weighs about as much as an entire mountain. And it's so heavy that its gravity starts to bend space and time, um, and so full of energy that when two of them collide, well, we'll, we'll see what happens in the movie. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to actually see a clip, once again, from Spark. Yeah, so uh, we're going to start off uh, by looking at those two neutron stars. Um, and you may notice that ours are red, Bruce's image was uh, kind of whitish. We're not quite sure exactly what they look like, so it's more of kind of this is our artist rendition of it. However, all of our clips are based in science. So... <laughs> we actually can see that warp of space and time because they are so heavy. It might f seem very similar to like a black hole in how we depict them as well. So as they're orbiting each other, they are moving so fast that we're actually slowing down time really, really slowly. Um, and their collision takes uh, less than a second to happen. And what I love about all of these images and our renderings is that we work with the scientists to create these. And eventually, that huge amount of energy will create those very heavy elements, like Bruce was saying. So what are we seeing here? This is where they've kind of spun so fast. And they've collided with each other, moving at pretty much the speed of light, smashing into each other so hard with enough energy, it's the only way we know to make heavy elements like gold. As they crash into each other, they actually create ripples in space and time. They're waves in gravity. And about 10 years ago, we figured out how to see these with giant lasers in places like Louisiana and Washington. This has happened once in the history of astronomy. We saw the gravity ripples. Every telescope on Earth turned to point in the right direction and saw the explosion. And about 2,000 astronomers all got together to write a paper saying, yeah, it looks exactly like we said it would. Definitely made gold. Okay. <laughs> chance to pat yourselves on the back. Thank you so much for the work you've done. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, I wasn't okay. one of those 2,000 out there. I was like one of the few astronomers <laughs> didn't make it to that paper. Oh, darn. I'm so sorry. Yeah, I was asleep. So. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. Well, moving forward. Um, so, uh, Jamie, you mentioned some of the things that we're looking for, right, in this one. And so part of the things that we're talking about, obviously, is the gold, the gold leaf. Right. We mentioned that. Um, we talked about the shape, so this one that they should um, be using, like icing that's smooth and uniform, and they were tasked to do a dome shape. Uh, DT, right. we, we didn't want to do anything too bold with this one, so um, were you hoping that they would come as close to a dome as possible? What were you looking for? We did. I mean, you know, for the first round, we had thought you can do a dome, but if you don't want to do a dome, you could also do a regularly, like traditionally sized cake or shaped cake. Um, for this one, we, we kind of required the dome, and I mean, there all gorgeous domes. Um, and we were also looking for creativity. I mean, we talked about gold, but like silver is also something that is formed from merging neutron stars. And we can see silver luster dust used here. Um, really, really creative use of just like sugar and um, trying to like get inspired by the elements. It's very impressive. So while we're not going to reveal the precise scores that the judges are using, I will tell you the rating system that they're working with. So they are rating the cakes on a scale of one to five, um, one being average, lacking skill, two being good, needing a bit more nuanced skill, 
three being very good and close to perfection, four being amazing and professional skill set, and five being extraordinary. Let's put this in a museum. Or maybe in the Cal Academy, huh? <laughs> uh, maybe. All right, so I think you all need a chance to deliberate, right? Give a, give a moment for that. So in the meantime, if I could have the bakers of these cakes come to the stage, please, right up to the side. <laughs> a lot of bakers. <laughs> okay, so if you could have come closer, or let's see here. So whose cake is this one over here? Okay, great. Stay nice and close. Okay, perfect. All right. Oh, three of you to one cake. Okay, that's a lot. Okay, that's a lot of people making a lot of cakes. Okay, so I'll start with you. You're closest to me here. Okay, so yours has such an impressive top here. I'm really excited. So tell me what your name is. And then as we're getting a close up of this cake, tell me exactly how you made it mm -hmm. and what went inside and what inspired you. Sure. My name is Lara Starr. So I've already won, right? Are <laughs> you kidding me? I'm kidding you. Wow. We could no not way. have planned that better. Exactly. All right. So tell us more. So this is a black magic chocolate cake with salted caramel buttercream. It's got a cinnamon, toffee, almond, pretzel, space dust, I'm calling it, both around the little side here and um, filling between the layers. It's got a mirror glaze, and my friend in the beginner category, it took me three times to get this mirror glaze to work. It so is, don't give up. Don't give up, no. Um, and then I've got some hard candy uh, pulsars coming out of it. Yeah, tell us more about what you learned about pulsars. Not as much as the people in the other category. Okay, well, maybe we'll have Bruce do that for us. I understand pulsars um, happen. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Great job. Okay. So, it was the two of you here who baked this? Okay, so introduce yourselves and then tell us exactly how you made this cake, which is so beautiful on the inside. <laughs> I told you they love this part. It just never gets old. Oh, I will. I'll show that off too. All right. So tell me your names and tell me how you made the cake. What goes inside of it? What was your inspiration? Uh, my name is Harry. My name is Mira. And we were inspired by two neutron stars uh, collision. And so as we have here two neutron stars uh, with the outer um, coating and like the ripplings of the uh, gravitational waves. So like we tried to use like hair dryer, things like that to create little waves that the explosion and the curvatures and all that. And then uh, as you cut inside the cake, um, you can see the transition from a very light blue into like a very dark, like red intense. So like scientists have said that like with uh, neutron stars, they can range from like blue to like dark uh, red and uh, black. So um, yeah, we got all those inspirations and the shapes and the colors. Bruce, are you learning some stuff over here? <laughs> all right. So, um, and then, so the cake inside, did you tell me the flavor? Uh, no, so I'll be talking about the flavor. So we were inspired by the element of iodine. Um, we actually, all three of us work at a company called Wild Type. We're actually making a cultivated seafood and we work on um, salmon flavor. And so I was like, okay, I work with a lot of seaweed. So let's incorporate seaweed into this because it has a lot of iodine. So in the middle, we have a... Um, a white miso vanilla cake and a black sesame buttercream just fit fitting with the Japanese theme. And then it's dusted with um, furikake and uh, sashimi togarashi, which is a Japanese seasoning. So we get a little bit of seaweed, a little bit of sesame, a little bit of spice. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. I wonder, I wonder, I'm going to be curious how the judges got the taste and if it was incredibly savory. Did you try it? We did, but we're used to it, so we're yeah, excited we to see what other people think. <laughs> and then, sounds like you all know each other? Okay, interesting. Do not judge this. We did not fix this competition at all. But look, here's the... T May I tilt it? Is this okay? Okay, okay. You can see the, um, the use of the hairdryer you used, yeah? To create the ripples. And then, um, this here, can you describe the... Yeah, so... Oh, this is like the little explosion. It's made from uh, isomalt, and we just try to cast it and using like, uh, you know, inspired by gravitational waves and things like that. We use gravity to like let it flow and just very, I don't know, just like... 
Very spacey. <laughs> spacey, yeah. <laughs> Great job. Let's give him a hand. And then I'll have the three of you go ahead. All three, all three, all three. Nice and tight. Okay, so the three of you together made this one here? Okay, so who wants to tell me about the inspiration for the outside of the cake? Uh, I can do that. So our What's your name? My name is Ella, um, and then do you guys wanna? I'm Quidnew. And I'm Wilson. So our cake is a pulsar. Uh, it's a spinning neutron star, which has these jets of electromagnetic radiation or caramels coming out of its magnetic poles. Uh, so here it can can spin, uh, and it uh, has here this gas accretion disk, uh, which is presumably coming from some other uh, you know, star body in the system, which is uh, sort of powering the emission of the electromagnetic radiation. So we have a uh, marzipan crust, um, representing sort of the crust on uh, a neutron star. And then on the inside, we were also inspired by iodine. Uh, so for us, um, we went with eggs. Uh, eggs are a really rich source of iodine. Our cake is a really rich source of eggs. There are 20 eggs in this cake. Uh, so we wanted to use eggs for flavor, but also for structure. So we have um, layers of an orange chiffon cake and a pistachio d'aquoise, uh, and then a um, orange blossom ermine icing. Uh, we didn't use seaweed as a flavor component, but we did use carrageenan, which is a, a seaweed extract, uh, to sort of thicken and stabilize our icing. Wow, that is a lot of big words. Um, amazing, amazing. How many people in the audience are familiar with dequas? Okay, do you want to do you want to explain what that is for everybody? Absolutely, it's a meringue, but it has nuts in it. So you, you make a meringue and you fold in some nuts and some sugar, and then you've got a dequas. <laughs> all right, perfect, amazing. Let's give them all a hand. Okay, so it seems like the judges are ready. Yeah? It was close, y'all. It was really, really, really close. Um, I feel like as we continue, it just gets like this mm -hmm. much more. Um, so what did you love? So we loved for, um, you know, number 17, um, we thought that the decoration was really gorgeous, that accuracy was beautiful. Um, and the use of gold and silver is just so pretty. Um, and we also like noticed the electromagnetic field and we, we, we were very impressed by that. Um, for 40, the one in the middle, um, oh my gosh, such beautiful work done. Um, we, we really love the uh, elements that you had used of like gold luster dust and um, them sort of like going together, like merging together, um, that was not required and they did it, which is amazing. Um, and then finally for uh, number 18 here, we thought the decoration was gorgeous, the flavor was so good, but ultimately we decided that 17 is our winner. <laughs> amazing, amazing, really great work. And it, it kind of felt like a princess cake. Our original idea, oh, our original idea was to do a, a, a princess cake, um, but princess cakes usually have this big mound of pastry cream, and we were worried that that wouldn't be stable at room temperature for a Very long time. Fair. So we had to we had to pivot. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so we're gonna have a prize for you um, if you wouldn't mind taking your cake. Yeah, of course. Congratulations. <laughs> okay. Great, great, great. All right, we're ready. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And then now we're heading into our advanced round. Okay, let's just go ahead and pull, pull back the, the curtain here. <laughs> oh, this is the best. These ones were. They're really pretty. Um, so before we, before we even do anything, I just want to say that, you know, Aditi and Jamie, as we were planning out what we were going to ask of bakers, I think that we were really cautious of saying, you know, what, what can people actually create? And I think we all decided, let's push the boundaries, let's see what they can do, let's say make a spherical cake, right? Okay, I'll, I'll be honest with y'all, I'll be honest with y'all, I'm kind of hidden behind a post here. So we had thought originally that this would just be a dome cake, and then I think it was Cecilia and a few others at KQED who were like, no, push them a little further. Do a spherical cake. And we're like, no, 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 no. How, how will people do that? I don't even know. I don't know how to do that. But what is this? What did y'all do? They did it. They did it. It's amazing. it's amazing. I'm so impressed. Sphere, yes. Absolutely. A sphere. I'm like, okay, maybe. 
But these floating, are, floating spheres, that was just, I yeah. don't understand And glowing spheres, it, it was not I'm truly enough. impressed. Um, yeah. I, I don't really know how a cake like this could be made. Jamie, can you tell us a little bit more about like structurally how you can kind of do something like this? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so these cakes are absolutely amazing. They're like literally hovering. So structurally, you're definitely going to need some, I mean, they, they built structures in order to have these cakes floating or appear to be floating. So these here actually have a structure that jets out and there's a cake board inside and the cake is actually built on top of that, which is kind of nuts. So that's how you get that floating. This one here, this boggled my mind. Because <laughs> I, was, I was so afraid to cut this cake. And... <laughs> Because you can see it, it actually moves. Just dangling yeah, just there. Yeah, dangling there. So cutting down into that cake was pretty scary. So again, they built out a structure. There's a cake board inside. I don't know if you can see from the side, but there is um, a cake board there. And again, the cake is built around it. But in order to do this and to do it properly, there is so much structural engineering going on. Yeah. Let alone putting a light inside of a cake. That, I mean, that's, that's pretty So that's exciting. Incredibly and then of course impressive. the shaping, just in general, just to get that skier skier shape are so difficult to make and it, it's just as round as these cakes are i mean these these are beyond yeah. advanced so really congratulations cool to all four of these cakes amazing all right so bruce let's talk about the science portion here so um we had the prompt for everyone of a um supernova for this final advanced round. Let's talk a little bit about what that means and what comes together, what elements come out of this sort of phenomenon in space. We have uh, an image, here we go, yeah. so. What you're seeing here is a picture of what's left over after a supernova. This is a supernova that exploded in our galaxy some time ago. There's a huge cloud of gas expanding outwards and the different colors trace different elements that are present like sodium, like potassium, like iron um, that are made in the explosion. But if we rewind it a little bit, I can talk about what it looks like before the supernova on the next slide. So the supernova is the end fate of a star that's much bigger than the sun. It does the stuff the sun does, turns, hydrogen, turns helium and hydrogen into helium, keeps going, turns helium into carbon and nitrogen and oxygen, and then keeps going after that. Well, we don't need the slide. Um, no, no, no. Layer well, after there layer after layer. There we go. <laughs> layer after layer, it finds a new source of fuel. It turns carbon into oxygen. It turns oxygen into neon, which is hard to put in a cake, so we don't have it. Turns neon into magnesium. Turns magnesium into silicon. And it ends up within its center a lump of iron. And iron is the most stable element in the universe. There's no way to get energy by burning it. And so that lump of iron just sort of sits there as the rest of the star gets heavier and goes through these phases faster and faster. It takes a million years to use up all its hydrogen. It takes about four days to burn up all its silicon. And then when it finally runs out of fuel, again, we can go to the movie now. So we can actually see, uh, so we can actually can see that kind of loss of t uh, gravity uh, for the inner core. And so we so this actually, is star that's, this that's is the star, of a star that's about to explode. About that's to explode. about to explode. Uh, again, we've slowed down time a lot here so that we can see the star itself. And it's not that round spherical shape anymore. It's kind of this weird fluffy shape. And now we've actually dove into the core of the star. So what we're seeing is uh, different elements. Um, so the uh, dark blue is going to be our carbon. The green is oxygen. Yellow is silicon. And kind of the really, really light blue at the very center, that's that iron core that we saw. And um, this whole simulation actually took about six different types of data simulations from different scientists all over the world um, to create just this uh, time frame. Do you know how they do it? I it's, think Bruce would be better at that, explaining these that. These are huge supercomputer things where they put in everything we understand about physics, everything we understand about atoms, everything we understand about gravity, and turn it on. And then nine times out of ten, it doesn't explode. It just sits there because they've got some of the math wrong. And so they go back and tweak the math because we know the damn things do explode. We actually see these. These are the, the brightest explosions we see in the universe. One of them went off near our sun about 500 years ago, and you could see it in daylight. It was a star that shone in the day. You could read by it at night, 
um, even now we can see the cloud left behind it. Now, back then we didn't have telescopes. Every astronomer is now hoping one goes off close to the Earth mm -hmm. now that we have telescopes so we can study it. Not too close to the Earth because you kind of don't want to be right next to the biggest <laughs> exactly. explosions yeah. in the universe. Here. And so we're actually now witnessing that uh, explosion. And again, we're slowing down time. Uh, but what we're seeing in that core is actually about the size of San Francisco. Mm. Uh, so we can really get an example of how big this is. Right. And eventually, it's actually going to start pushing out all of those elements it already created in its lifetime. So this is how we're going to be able to see that in that cloud. And these also make a lot of radioactive elements, which we have chosen not to have incorporated into cakes for <laughs> obvious safety reasons, um, but is responsible for getting a lot of the sort of weird exotic light elements out into the universe to make life out of, for example. And each different explosion is going to give us a different kind of formation of the cloud. And again, we call it uh, a supernova. And basically, nova just means cloud-esque thing. So... Anything we see that's kind of fuzzy and cloudy, then it does. So as it continues to expand, it takes a couple of days to be the size of our solar system. But eventually, over a long period of time, like centuries, uh, it will continue to expand to a sphere of almost 10 light years. And that's the distance for how long it takes uh, light, the fastest thing that we know of, to travel from one side to the other in 10 years. So this is huge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so at this point, what, what are we seeing right now? This so we are seeing, again, the uh, different elements, kind of this shell. Um, I like to say it's kind of those layers being pushed out a little bit more. Um, and you can see that, again, it's not spherical either. So it's going to have different uh, ways of coming out. And what we saw earlier is actually a, a picture of that in x-ray. So we don't just look at it in the light that we see with our own eyes. We also uh, look at it in uh, different wavelengths of light. Right. So basically for our bakers to be able to kind of create anything even similar, the closest thing we can come to is, is seeing like a sphere, right? Basically, yeah. <laughs> um, OK, well, I think that you all are still finishing up your tasting, but maybe are ready to begin the judging process, yeah? Um, before we do, let's talk about the types of elements that kind of come out of yeah. here and the flavors that would be um, in these cakes that you'd be looking for. Yes, yeah, so this, actually, should I stand over there yeah. maybe? <laughs> I'll come over this way <laughs> so you all can see me. So this one was, it's, it's interesting because, um, like, first off, I just want to say, this was such a hard category. All the other categories have like three cakes uh, or like, you know, three contestants. This one had four. It was just so, it was so stiff. The competition was like very, very uh, close. So we, we felt like we needed four. Um, for this round, it's, it's interesting because the supernova creates so many different elements. Um, so we really had our pick of what we wanted the bakes to be inspired by. So we're looking for cakes that have sodium, so maybe flaky sea salt, um, you know, or salty food, something like that. Magnesium with chocolate. I see chocolate all over the place here. It's so great. Um, but they could have also used almonds or chickpeas or Brazil nuts or anything like that. Um, they could have also used potassium. So, you know, they could have done like bananas or oranges or honeydew, apricots, all kinds of varieties we've got here. Um, what were some of the flavors that you've caught in these? Oh, I Jane? definitely, well, for me, a lot of the flavors, it's not just the flavors, it's also the textures of the cake. So having a cake have a little bit of crunch. So you definitely saw that in a lot of the cakes. So there is definitely the nuts that were in there. Um, I definitely tasted apricot, and I could be wrong, but I definitely <laughs> tasted apricot in there as well. Um, flaky sea salt, love a little bit of salt inside any cake. That really just kind of dulls down the sugar a little bit and really amplifies the flavor of chocolate, yeah. which is really nice. So gives you that sense of elements. Exactly. All right. So shall I give you all a moment to deliberate? And while we do, let's have our bakers come to the stage, the four of you. Um, if you wouldn't mind coming this way. There you go. <laughs> OK. I said four of you. I should have said eight. I should have known that an advanced baker. So if you wouldn't mind standing just right behind your cake. Oh, are you sure you want to do that now? Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. Oh, wow. 
okay, maybe they need to see that again. <laughs> the cardboard has been removed. <laughs> All right, great. I'm very scared to walk around these cakes. Um, okay, so let's see here. I'll start with you. You're, you're right here. Um, and if you all wouldn't just mind like kind of staggering like immediately behind your cake, just if someone's shorter, there you go, nice and tight. All right, so tell me your names and tell me what you made for your cake. What's your name? Sophie. Oh, oh, there you go. Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Nice to meet you. And what's your name? Um, I'm Nina Baker. She's Sophie, my little assistant. So your last name's Baker. It is Baker. Yes. <laughs> we represent. <laughs> and I love the outfits. Thank you. Great. Matching galaxies. Your matching galaxies. So, and it looks like that maybe inspired even the colors of your cake. What did you do here and how did you make it? Um, so I really zeroed it on chocolate. I love chocolate. It has magnesium. I was like, right on. Let's go chocolate. So um, we have layers of chocolate fudge cake. Um, if I could turn it. Uh, so I actually build the bottom of the sphere so it touches in a single point out of modeling chocolate. So it's chocolate all the way down. Um, so I have about two inches of modeling chocolate to give me sort of a little bit of a base, but it's edible too. Um, and then I have the layers of chocolate fudge cake, Swiss meringue buttercream with more dark chocolate in it. Um, and then for the filling, to touch on that potassium, um, I've made a kumquat, orange, and apricot curd. Um, so it has all three fruit with potassium in it. Um, the curd is kind of creamy. All the fruit is actually from my town. It's all local, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and then I combined that with a toffee for the salty element. So I made a, a pretzel, almond, and pistachio toffee. Um, and a dark chocolate ganache to have kind of that denser creaminess inside. And then to preserve the spherical shape, since buttercream can be dicey with that kind of thing. Um, I also covered it in ganache before I put the mirror glaze. So I wanted to represent kind of that space in the expanding cloud where you kind of see space through a supernova. So I wanted to do the, you know, the splatter of the stars. There's a lot of glitter for all the different shininess of stars. Um, and then the, the nebula of the cloud is represented by these little um, paper, um, it's wafer paper, it's all edible. Um, and then the magical bit, um, it glows just like our cloud. <laughs> so I didn't have a, a stable light to um, shine through it, but my little assistant can shine the front of it. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Great. Okay, round of applause. That was great. Okay, thank you. I'm going to step right here to the TV. Come on. Maybe you can peek your head to the side over here. There you go. All right. Come on forward. What are your names and what did you do with your cake? I'm Olivia. And I'm Rochelle. Okay. And we're also wearing our space shirts. Oh, yeah. We're going to have to, here, come on over here. We're going to have you come over so you can show everybody your shirt. Let's go this way. <laughs> there you go. Oh, okay. We're going to get a close-up. Don't worry. <laughs> um, actually, let's see here, too. I want to be able to show off. It's really heavy. <laughs> okay, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and grab it and then tilt it just a little bit this way to the side. That way. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, let's just leave it there for one second. Okay, all right, so now that we're taking a look at the inside of your cake, um, how did you make it, and what was your inspiration for the flavors? So after reading the required elements, I knew I wanted to base the cake flavors around Terry's orange chocolate. I don't know if you're familiar with it over the holidays, but they also have it for Easter. Hey, Target. <laughs> but um, so just for stability purposes, the bottom half is not cake, but it's... Um, marbled orange chocolate Rice Krispies treats. Okay. And then the top half of the sphere is cake. And it's orange chocolate marble cake. And there is orange chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream. So that covers the magnesium and the potassium elements. And then for the filling, I have miso salted caramel and a sweet and salty crumble, which is made of ruffles and pretzels, which covers the sodium component. And then the whole thing is enrobed in dark chocolate ganache with, with a little bit of orange zest. Um, well, let's, let's go ahead and twist it back towards the front okay. so they can see the front of it again so we can talk about the outside and how you decorated it. And then it's decorated with um, colored royal icing and then this is a wafer paper lace. So everything's edible minus the structure. <laughs> yeah, great. And then now that we've done this, we've got to show the shirts. I don't, I, I don't, we have to show the shirts off. I'm just going to see if I can get 
them to get a camera angle. There we go. Okay. Now let's see if they'll be able to bounce. But you're wearing your space animal boba shirt? <laughs> yeah. And then yours says, I need more space. Yeah. I'm a mom. <laughs> and can I say hi to Kaden? Hi, Kaden. All right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Hello. You two look familiar as well. Is that yeah, correct? We were here last year. Okay, yeah. well, welcome back. And you've actually made it to the advanced round on stage. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is my memory. I'm actually doing this from memory. You were the People's Choice winner yeah. before, right? Yes. Okay, and, and also tell me because there's, uh, this is not planned. This is not, none of this is planned. But you all actually are like pretty extreme bakers, yeah? yeah. Tell everybody. Kind of. <laughs> well, uh, we have our home bakery business in Los Altos. We live in Los Altos, California, so it was a drive to get up here, but the cake survived. Um, and yeah, it's called La Jawab Treats, um, and we started three years ago. Yeah. yeah. And my brother was actually on Food Network's Kids Baking Championship, and he won the show. <laughs> It's amazing. Amazing. Okay. So I think that we're going to be able to see your cake. So while it's facing the audience, can you tell them about the outside and just the way that it looks and how you created the, the actual face of it? Tell me how you did that. Yeah. So the bottom portion of it is basically kind of representing a galaxy. It has some um, white food dye splatters to represent stars, some mini gold star sprinkles on it too. And then the top is the actual exploding supernova. And it hasn't completely exploded yet. And so that's why there is actually a light inside of it. I don't know if you can see it right now, but there's a light inside of it, uh, which is going through the, um, through, the uh, through all the candies. And that's representing the core of the supernova. And then it's slowly exploding. And then we also made some glass shards with yellow and red to just represent some fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then tell me about the actual cake itself that you have inside here. So the flavor, we made a moist vanilla cake and we soaked it in freshly squeezed orange juice from our backyard and then... <laughs> and then <laughs> for the fillings, we have a blackberry orange compote and a brown butter sage buttercream. And then it's wrapped in um, a white chocolate ganache and then it also has some toasted almonds for those elements. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm gonna see if we can do. Can we get the lights to dim, if that's possible? If we could have the lights dim, much like we do for the videos. Oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'm gonna stand on the other side of you here. All right, I'm also not gonna to touch this one just for fear of what could possibly happen. So if you could introduce yourselves and then tell me the inspiration for the outside of the cake and, and how, you, how you did it. How did you make this? Um, okay, so my name is Quincy and this is- Jonathan. I'm Jonathan. Quincy's dad. Um, and <laughs> so we, when we started brainstorming for the cake, we were like, we wanna make it hanging. Um, and so we have like a, a cake board and then a pole and there's more cake on the bottom and there's like a tiny metal disc that's holding it up <laughs> and then we have this string going through the middle that's just you know <laughs> so tell me about the colors that you put on the outside and why you decided to design it the way that you did so um the colors we did because they were the colors of the frosting on the inside and we didn't really feel like changing the color <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. That's absolutely fair. Um, okay, so if you wouldn't mind helping me, I'm going to have you do this. But if you could just tilt it so that we can see and just turn it out that way so that they can see the outs. There we go. Exactly. Oh, you spinning. Keep spinning. So keep spinning. All right, there we go. Right there. Oh, now it's going to go too far. Okay, well. Bruce, is that, is this, I mean, this is what supernovas do, right? It's just yep. kind of spinning around. All right, there we go. Oh, and it's coming back around. Okay, what are the flavors inside of the cake? Okay, so we have um, a lot of flavors. So the inside is like a Mexican hot chocolate, and it's, uh, it's a little bit spicy. And then we have a spicy cinnamon frosting and another little layer of chocolate, and that was for magnesium. Um, and then we have 
dulce de leche, and it has popcorn in it <laughs> um, for sodium. <laughs> and there's a confetti cake, and we have, oh my god, a ginger coconut frost. Yes, ginger coconut, and we also have mango coconut cake. There's a strawberry cake, and we put in <laughs> fresh... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's been a long day. <laughs> You've been baking a while. <laughs> it sounds like there's a lot of cake in here. Yeah. Okay, so we put in um, fresh strawberries and, like, strawberry powder from um, dehydrated ones. And it also looks like there's cake. Is there cake on the bottom here in the yeah, base? Yeah, so that's that's more of the chocolate and more cinnamon and then mirror glaze. So it's like, it's like the rest of the sky. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Let's give it up for these bakers. All right, so it looks like you've deliberated. Y'all, it was very, very, very close. Um, so we loved, um, you know, 28. Uh, we loved the, the flavor of it, and the decoration was just gorgeous. So, so pretty. Um, for 29... We thought that the um, flavor was so good, and it's also incredibly creative. Like we don't understand how I don't. I still don't get it. I don't get it. Um, and and we also noticed that you know they they used wafer paper, which I believe is made from uh, potato starch, right? Yeah, which is like some of that sodium element. So that's amazing. Um, and we also thought thirty nine was so creative. I mean that that light inside. Like I don't even understand. Um, for thirty eight. The flavor was great. It's so interesting. Y'all had so many things coming out of it, like a supernova would have, like mass shooting out of it. Like we could feel all the textures and the crunch, the popcorn. Oh my God. Um, but ultimately, we decided that 29 was the winner. <laughs> Amazing job, y'all. Such a great job, y'all. If you wouldn't mind grabbing your cake, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Congratulations. And then we'll, we'll help you escort your cake off. <laughs> All right, so if you guys wouldn't mind heading over, and then I'll talk with you over here. Okay. Come on right this way. Um, if it's too heavy to lift, we can... No, 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 you can leave. Okay. Come on right this way. No, 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 you'll come over with us. Um, so you won. Yeah, you've got the winning um, advanced cake. So, um, yes, yes. Applauding, applauding. Oh, God. There we go. Um, can you just give us a little bit more about what you learned ultimately and what was the most exciting thing that came out of um, learning more about the science portion of, of this as you built your cake? I learned that driving with this cake is very scary from San Jose. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to open up the trunk with a big blob. But um, yeah, I just love learning about what a supernova is doing, doing a lot of Googling <laughs> again. Um, just, um, yeah, I love astronomy. Great. Hey. Amazing. Thank you so much. Congratulations, you two. Thank you. We're going to leave that one up there if you guys wouldn't mind. We'll come. All right. So, judges, come on over. Um, Aditi, we have a special prize for each of the folks who won in the beginner, intermediate, and advanced rounds. Yes, Is that correct? We okay. do. We do. So, the uh, prizes for the beginner, intermediate, and advanced rounds are um, a jar of sprinkles. Um, and I think Sweet we have Polita. a slide for it, we too. We do have a slide for it. Okay. Um, so, they're a jar of sprinkles from Sweeta Polita. We also have a mini spatula. Um, we have a bench scraper, a dish towel, and some uh, cupcake rounds, some cupcake uh, wrappers, um, and a KQED tote. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Um, Jamie, what were you most excited about from this round and seeing the creativity? And were you inspired by anything for your own amazing cakes? I'm going to have to up my game now. <laughs> I have to make suspending cakes. Um, and I was dealt the daunting task of cutting these cakes, <laughs> or the, the advanced cakes, and that was just... The, the suspending cake was just oh insane. So there's so much inspiration there. I mean, the cakes were absolutely amazing. And just the textures and the crunch and the use of the elements were just 
amazing. Like they just incorporating even the potato starch on the outside of the winning cake was really, really impressive. And the lights. Yeah. yeah. The light example. Do you have any sort of advice for anybody if they're going to, we're going to do these cake offs so much oh. more. Any advice for the bakers in the future? Say, bring it, bring it all. <laughs> like whatever ideas that you have, any kind of creativity, sky's the limit. I mean, this time around, this was the second time that we've done mm -hmm. it. And we got suspending cakes. We got glowing cakes. We have cakes that were just appear to be floating with the black background. I mean, there's so many things that could be done. And I feel like, honestly, like the beginner level, they up their game because it's not the beginner level that we saw the last time around. So each one, it's, they're getting yeah. serious. Getting yeah. So getting it's just going to get harder yeah. and harder from here. Yeah. I don't know how we up it in difficulty from yeah. dark matter, but <laughs> and, and the like. Um, Bruce, what, what, did, what do you hope that folks come away with from an event like this and learning more about science and, and these sorts of things with stars and their explosions and the elements? The biggest thing is how we're kind of all connected to the universe, that, that this process that started with, with really boring stuff um, and simple laws of physics in the first, first seconds turns into these incredibly beautiful galaxies, makes stars, makes planets, um, and also that the process that does it isn't unique here. Part of what we try and do in astronomy is understand how this operates elsewhere and if there's other people out there having cake judging on their own planets. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> Twilight theme playing in the background. Thank you, Bruce. Um, and Jackie, lastly, um, I was able to go and visit the California Academy of Science. I was able to watch Spark. Um, First of all, tell people how they can go and see it and, and just tell them what you hope they leave with if they are able to watch the show. Yeah, so we're very excited to be showing uh, Spark for at least another six months. Um, so if you get a chance, we play it daily at the Morrison Planetarium. Uh, we are very excited also on April 4th, we are going to be doing a um, pay what you wish day at the Cal Academy. So uh, a great way to come um, and support the Academy as well. Yeah, and learn much more about science. Much more so. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, did you all have fun? <laughs> Great. Um, so, um, most of you hopefully were able to sign um, a piece of paper that says that you're totally happy to be eating cakes from bakers all over the Bay Area. Um, and for those of you who didn't, we'll have some more for you to sign out there so you can try all of the cakes that you saw. You'll try the cakes that didn't quite make it to the stage. You'll be able to taste and see all the flavors. We also have uh, signs on each of the cakes that has won out there so you know who the winners are. And um, we do suggest that if you're able to come back and bake, continue to do it because we need all the support we can get at KQED Live to have people come into this awesome event space. Um, can you please join me in thanking all of the amazing bakers that came out tonight? Um, I have to give a big thank you to the KQED Live team, uh, Sarah Rose Leonard, the producer for this event. Um, a big thank you to the booth who is running the slides and all the videos for us. Um, a huge thank you to our judges as well and to all of you for coming to watch and all the people who are watching at home. I always like to say that they must have had fun there, but not as much fun as we had here. Um, so if you want to see more programming like this, go to kqed.org slash live so you can come back to our event space and have a great time like we did tonight. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the cake.